I'm Garen Richard. I am the Chief Cocktail Officer of the Sunken Harbor Club. I'm also a self-appointed tropical drinks evangelist for the New York cocktail scene. Uh, both of those things are ridiculous titles, but it's a serious bar that we're in, which is the Sunken Harbor Club. In New York, a lot of tiki tropical drinks were sort of relegated to sort of an underground scene. That existed for a time being in New York, and then a lot of those places closed, and the bar Bartenders were sort of forced to do these underground parties to keep that spirit alive. It was a really great part of the Brooklyn community. Sunken Harbor Club today is sort of a combination of many different pop-ups coming together. So they were passionate about keeping that alive when it was really hard to do so. Rent is expensive and we move fast and break things here. So the fact that we can have this beautiful space in this historic building from 1892 means a lot to people. The owner wanted it to become a permanent bar and found this Victorian building that was for sale and realized he could do two projects in one. We opened Gage and Tolner first and made sure that was correct because that is such an important part of the Brooklyn community and has history. Luckily, because of its historic protection, all of the beautiful woodwork and wallpaper and all that stuff was, you know, you couldn't mess with it. So when our partners came in, they simply just had to tear the layers back and they were able to bring the, you know, late 19th century, early 20th century back to life. Then break with the history and create the fantasy of Sunken Harbor Club upstairs, which is really exciting. It's a huge nautical aspect of Red Hook, and we wanted to reflect that within the space. Our partners were able to get actually a lot of pieces from now defunct bars that were in Red Hook and give a lot of layers to the room. I would say the mural is the first thing that catches your eye when you turn the corner. We can actually change the color over the period of time, and we can start sort of during the daytime and then get you know, darker, weirder as the night goes on. And then when we do Last Call, we actually turn the whole mural red. So it's like a red alert for the bar. <laughs> I worked at a very minimalist, kind of modern bar called Existing Conditions. I worked at one that was a kind of speakeasy style in the West Village called Slowly Shirley. And I was always able to give them that like taste of escape, but not necessarily the environment. There was this secret society in Brooklyn of very interesting people drinking very interesting things, and now you can be a part of that secret society. And for you, we got the El Diablo! When the cocktail boom happened, people thought those speakeasies were real. People respond to that. That made them feel interesting and dangerous. That makes their night out, you know, just that much more special. You have people coming here specifically for the bar, you know, regulars of the community, and then you have people that are waiting to go into the steakhouse downstairs. That's why I wanted the breadth of the menu to really cover a lot of different flavor profiles, a lot of different spirits. The way we formatted the menu is we modeled it after Don's old menus. He used to create menus that were at three different levels of power of drink. He would do light, medium, heavy. The way we decided to capture that is to do the depths of the ocean. So you start with in the shallows, then you're in the twilight zone, a little darker, and then the strongest drinks are in the abyss. It just immediately puts people in a fun mood that, you know, these are not just drinks on a page, like that they mean something, you know. We're really in the platinum age of the tropical, the faux tropical cocktail. A lot of the techniques that I learned now live here at Sunken Harbor Club, and I'm able to kind of use these 21st century techniques to restore 20th century cocktails, which is a really rewarding process. If I can take sort of a sweet pink grapefruit and make it as tart as a lemon, I can build the entire drink around that tart grapefruit rather than it being a supporting character. Same thing with like sweeteners. 
we wanted to dial in the sweetness of a lot of our sweeteners, get it to the exact proportions of like a simple syrup or a rich cane syrup. Dialing those things in is more to focus all those flavors and to restore those drinks to the legends that they are. You want it to be a really impactful and powerful drink. And if it's flaccid and gray in its flavor profile, like you're failing history by doing that, you know? One of the techniques is called acid adjusting, which is taking any fruit that is not a like tart citrus like lemon or lime and converting it to the acidity of a lemon or lime. The only way to do that is just to know how tart all three of those fruits are, like orange and grapefruit and pineapple, and then just bump it up to the tartness of lemon and lime. And we do that with citric acid powder. And it's really cool. Like if you have a tart pineapple juice, you can build a colada on it that's not sweet. Another technique that we use behind the bar that I think is really vital to a good, well-constructed tropical cocktail is flash blending. But in New York, I feel like flash blending was something that wasn't picked up by the craft cocktail scene. Flash blending it solves a lot of the issues that people have with crushed ice drinks. You're putting a measured amount of crushed ice in the glass and then a measured amount of crushed ice in the tin and you're getting the same dilution every time across the board. And the way we build those recipes is we have an intentional amount of dilution so that your cocktail is chilled, all those flavors are opened up, and it can sit over time and you're not like rushing to finish the drink. I want people to enjoy themselves. I want people to sit down and have a conversation and let the drink open up over time. The drink we're making is the Angostura Colada. It is a well-known drink from the original Sunken Harbor Club pop-up. When we opened the permanent version of Sunken Harbor Club, we wanted to revisit the recipe, see if we could do some new things with it. It's a bold, bitter, uh, tropical number. This is the Angostura Colada, the infamous cocktail, as made famous by Zach Overman at the Sunken Harbor Club pop-up. This is the version of the cocktail that is now made at Sunken Harbor Club, the bar. Updated for 2022, but still bitter, Brooklyn, and boozy. We're gonna start this drink with a little bit of salt. We season every one of our cocktails with salt water. We're on a ship. And also, don't you want your cocktails seasoned, right? We do two types of pineapple in the Angostura Colada. We do one called acid-adjusted pineapple and then some regular fresh pineapple juice. This is pineapple that is as tart as lime juice. This cuts down the sweetness of the colada. And then we are gonna do some regular pineapple juice as well as the acid-adjusted pineapple juice. It's stuck in the bottle. That's how you know it's fresh. And then we're gonna build our colada base with uh, some coconut cream. This is Coco Lopez that we cut with coconut milk. The coconut milk brings down the sweetness of the Coco Lopez so that it's a little bit more usable for cocktails and the coconut milk also adds a lot of texture to the drink. And then here's the fun part. We're gonna do our spirit mix. Our spirit blend is a mixture of one and a quarter ounces of Angostura bitters and then two different types of Jamaican rum. You just have to be careful with the Angostura bitters because it can stain a lot of your clothing. And we're gonna flash blend this drink. We built it in the tin. We're gonna do measured amount of ice here, and then we're gonna do some in the glass. Now our drink is chilled and aerated. Has lots of beautiful bubbles on the top, and that's gonna carry the aromatics of the drink to your nose. Finish this off with a little bit of nutmeg, which is from the original recipe, and 
some beautifully manicured pineapple leaves. And that is the Angostura Colada, keeping Brooklyn bitter and tropical for years to come. You're gonna see a lot more of those styles of drinks in the future. I think stirred cocktails, carbonated cocktails, which we sell a lot of, and savory cocktails, all things that are going to emerge in this new canon of tropical cocktails. The effort that's being put into this is to give you a good experience, and there's a lot of man hours, a lot of sweat and tears that go into creating these drinks and to creating this whole room so that you can have a good night, so that somebody can have a great first date or catch up with somebody they haven't seen in 10 years. And if we're not doing that, then we shouldn't be doing what we're doing.